Hi guys, it's Asha Marke here, Lemon Creation. Today there will be no project. Instead, I'm gonna answer the question which I am being asked quite often. Uh, where do I take my focal points uh, from? So stay tuned. This video is really overdue, long time overdue, because, uh, well, I've been asked the questions for years already, I think. And so today I want to explain you step by step where do I take my pictures from and that's why I put the photos of some of my projects with the either photos like this one, square ones, or just, you know, uh, people, children, which are cut out. Because that's what I'm doing. I'm looking for the good photos, uh, I am printing them out and then I am fussy cutting them. So let's start. I'm gonna show you step by step what I do, so please bear with me because I don't usually do screen recordings, I don't do videos like that, but I'm gonna explain you as much as I can and, or as clear as I can. So basically, I am going, um, I'm opening a page which is called Pixabay. This, this is by far my favorite page, I've been using it for years, I think for five years, uh, um, almost since I started uh, doing the mixed media art journaling. So basically that's the... Um, the page which when you open it you have already a uh, choice of uh, pictures you can download by uh, you just scroll down and you go to the next page but what you can do is you can also go to the uh, search uh, part of the screen search engine i think no search tab search tab thank you I got it finally and then you put either children or uh, women or artistic or magical whichever comes to your mind i quite often use children because i find them they are you know they have uh, so much joy in them sometimes sadness also uh, but i also use a lot of women sometimes i use uh, people dancing um, sometimes i want to use something uh, magical so i'm trying to look for a sort of queen or um, whatever so basically you are strolling through the pictures, you are looking at them and the one which please you well, you basically click on it. What I do usually, I choose the photos which are easy to fuzzy cut. For example, look at this girl here with the, um, with the, oh, I forgot the word, skates. Uh, what I do, I click on the photo. And then I have a button free download. By the way, I was showing you here. This is photo which is free for commercial use. I am not using it for commercial purposes, but I still prefer if the photos are uh, free like that. I don't have to give credits, uh, which can be annoying because you know you would have to write under every single of your posts, you know, with credits. So um, I prefer to, you know, to choose the photos from this side. It's uh, very straightforward. You click on it, then you download it, and you have your photo. And I also choose um, pictures which are easy to cut, but also, um, you know, which kind of have at least half of the body, so I can actually place them well on the, on the, on the, on the, on the actual page. <laughs> this is the second uh, page, um, which is called Unsplash. Basically, the same uh, idea. You know, you go to the search bar, you put the uh, wherever you are looking for, children for example, and then it opens for you, uh, you know, the gallery with children. Very often uh, they are, you know, things mixed up in it, but you know, no problem at all. You can go through it, you can, you know, check and find your uh, happiness. I love absolutely these two uh, children, isn't that cute? And look at that, they are quite long, so they will fit nicely on my page because you know they are of, you know, the best for me is to actually uh, choose uh, the whole people, like, you know, from the toe to the head, but some, very often that's not the case, so I choose like, you know, as much as I can. So basically you click here on the download free, and then you can say thanks, so give a shout, a shout out on the social media for the person who uh, created this photo. I think it's not obligatory though, because you don't use it for commercial purposes, but that's why I use Unsplash uh, not as often as I use um, Pixabay, the first page I showed you. And there is also another one, Pexels, which uh, 
I heard about it, then I forgot, and then Natalie Orlasher, uh, you know, she's, uh, um, she's an artist, uh, one of my friends, um, uh, she uh, again reminded me about it, and it's a nice page also, the same purpose, the same uh, way of looking for things, you either go uh, scroll down the photos which are on the first page, or you write in the search uh, bar wherever you're looking for. And don't worry if the photos are in color, for example, because you want them black and white, you can always change them to black and white later. And so you basically click on the button free download. You can, of course, say thanks to uh, the author of the photo or you can donate some um, money uh, via uh, PayPal, but this is not uh, obligatory. And what I love about um, Pexel is actually the fact that if you choose, for example, um, a screaming woman, then underneath this picture you're gonna get uh, pictures which are similar so another woman screaming <laughs> and then you can load still more and you know if you are in the one particular team you can actually get more pictures like that it's easier to look mm, I find it more straightforward because I have a Mac I have a photo um, photo program I think <laughs> I'm not sure I am. I'm so bad with uh, with technical stuff. So what I do is I go to this photo or photos and then I choose import and then when I press this button I have a choice you know uh, of uh, my folder folders and in the folders I have uh, different photos and then I can choose the photos I downloaded. So I'm choosing them and they are appearing here then I have to uh, import uh, press on the button on the right hand uh, corner import all photos and they are appearing in your photo library I am I don't remember how it works on Windows which program would you use I think as far as I remember because before I had Windows uh, it was pretty straightforward which doesn't surprise me because I find Mac not really <laughs> not really cool so those are my photos and then amongst those photos, I can choose the ones I want to print. I usually have a layout uh, for which I am choosing either 10 or 12 photos, so like that they fit uh, well into the page. And uh, I'm gonna talk to you about the paper and all of that a little bit later. But I choose my photos and then I have the options of putting them into a custom or I can fit to the page if I want to print one by one, but you know, um, or I can do a contact sheet also where I can actually adjust columns and margins, which is not bad. And I found that uh, for my type of art journaling, these size of photos are the best. Uh, and you know, I am happy with uh, this kind of layout. I actually prefer this layout. So um, I think this is custom. So I added two photos to my, uh, to many. So what I can do is I can just press on the small arrow in the uh, corner on the top and then delete those two photos. I think I'm not here yet. Yes. So as you can see, I am in the custom. And so I'm coming back here with this small arrow, which was in the left hand corner. And I am deleting two photos uh, and selecting them. Then I'm going back again to print option. And then I have only those two, four, six, eight, ten photos, uh, which are fitting perfectly, which are actually, uh, you know, the good size. And then I'm going to print. I can always choose black and white like that. You can see all the photos which are in color. If you don't want them in color, they are uh, straight away in black and white. Otherwise, you can work in Photoshop or other program I'm going to tell, uh, tell you about. And I always now print on matte uh, photo paper. And I explain you why in a moment. And so I print mm, or I press print and uh, that's what I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get a page with uh, those photos and I'm gonna keep them either as the photos uh, like square or rectangular photos or I am gonna cut the, uh, you know, the people out of it. Like uh, do the fuzzy cutting. And this is one of the program I am using. It's called Be Funky. It's also, uh, you know, the uh, very simple uh, um, adjustment. You can make free of charge. You don't have to pay for it. And I've been using that for years and I love it. So you basically go into a, a photo open and then you, uh, you choose your photos. 
and then you have a photo which you can work with so for example you can crop so you if i see that there is too much empty space above or beside the uh, persons i am i know i'm gonna fuzzy cut i can change it into a different size you know by cropping it so they will be bigger and I can also change the color very simply by you know putting into uh, like playing with the saturation there is also an option I think somewhere here in the you know in the left hand side bar uh, to change things uh, to change things into black and white I'm sorry uh, my computer is making sounds I'm not, I'm not sure why so basically that's what I'm doing and then I'm saving it you know with the button which was in the middle and I get my photos like that you know guys I've been learning that for years and you know there are always some things which are annoying me which I am not managing like here for example I am struggling with stopping a new screen recording because I haven't done it for so long <laughs> so it's really um, that's the thing also you have to find your uh, happiness you have to find the pages you like you have to find photos you like and then the layout for printing them and uh, you gonna get it it's not complicated and I wanted to show you because uh, you know because actually uh, this is those are free photos you don't have to pay for them and you know everybody can use them and so why not and because you've been asking me and you've been so kind with your comments and watching me and subscribing to my channel so you know I want to give something in return even if it's tiny thing like that so let's talk about storing the photos for years that's what I've been doing I actually had two boxes you know one for the square photos or rectangular ones and then I started with a smaller box for the photos or for uh, rather the um, people which I cut out which I fuzzy cut but as you can see you know uh, <laughs> because I moved them around they were getting a little bit broken <laughs> like hands were kind of bended and all of that and it was a pain to find the photo which matched for example my layout if it comes to colors or a theme or wherever because I had to basically go like that one by one and it just drove me absolutely crazy for years I came up with a solution by accident all by myself even though I strongly believe that people are doing that all over the place but um, I never found any tutorial about how to store them it's just one day I just bought a repositionable glue and I said to myself I'm gonna just glue the you know the square ones to the uh, to the to the to the paper <laughs> and uh, that's how uh, I am storing them now I am showing you also my serrated scissors from Tim Holtz I have in them in two sizes one small one for cutting you know the for fuzzy cutting and the big one for cutting uh, you know photos or I use the guillotine but they are super cool if you are having problems with choosing the good scissors choose them they are really nice they are not getting uh, you know nothing gets attached to them you can always clean them perfectly and they cut really well and I am using the paper which is like a um, cardboard paper I am lucky enough to have it in white and it comes actually with my photo paper which I buy from Canon and it's actually the backing of the photo paper I'm buying and so uh, what I started to do first I started with rectangular uh, photos and then I bought this uh, repositionable glue this one is actually empty and I always struggle if you know a very good repositionable glue uh, please let me know in the comments because this one is just uh, always breaking somewhere halfway through the roll and so lately I've replaced it with the in French it's called patafix but it's a sort of um, gluey thing which you usually put to on the wall if you want to place something on the wall you know like a piece of paper but I use that now for the photos because why not and you know what I do I don't put all over the photo nor that nor the um, repositionable glue I just put it somewhere in the middle or if some you know some person has a very long arm I may put a little bit at the end of the arm but I usually put in one or two places and like that you know I can always take it out from the paper without any problems so that's what I'm doing with the with these photos you know I can take them out I can place them back and this is guys like a life changer because 
you know, I just see them straight. I have them like, you know, uh, on both, well, not really on both sides because I like to put them beside. And I put them in a smaller plastic packet like that. So like that, they are not moving and I know I'm not gonna break them, you know, by moving them. They are here. When I have a page, you know, I just take the photos which I think will fit the best the page and then I can compare and then I can just glue them back without even using again the repositionable glue or this white tacky thing I think it's tack it's called tack I think yes <laughs> and you just you know you place it on the paper on your art journal you check if it matches very well your page or your creation and then you put it back on the page uh, on this cardboard thing you know you have to be careful sometimes they jump <laughs> <laughs> jumped out but in general that's that you know it's uh, super simple and I put them on both sides so like that you know I don't use too many of these um, uh, plastic uh, packets and I kind of put them also uh, thematically so on one they are children the other was a little bit of magic Star Wars space and uh, I try to keep them like that so like that I am you know uh, I'm sure that uh, it's uh, it's gonna I'm gonna find them quickly oh that's the thing and I wanted to tell you about the paper so beforehand I was using uh, ah, I'm showing you now how easy it is to fit something <laughs> on the paper to find your uh, you know your choice so you can watch that and then I'm gonna tell you uh, about the paper this boy is way too small so that's what I'm showing you right now I have a Canon printer so I'm using Canon uh, uh, matte photo paper. I found I uh, bought uh, some kind of cheap brand m uh, matte photo paper. It was not good. For years though, I was uh, using uh, glossy photo paper, and it's actually uh, not good. Glossy photo paper, as you can see, even now there are some children which are printed uh, on the matte photo paper and some on the glossy photo paper glossy photo paper it's very hard to take photos of your project later on if you have overhead lamp lamp like i have it's giving you a lot of uh, light which is you know reflecting on the photos and then of course you can leave the traces of your uh, fingers all over so use matte photo paper and i'm showing you here also i have some steampunk elements the other thing you can do, you can also go to Etsy. There are some uh, artists which are making very nice uh, downloadable prints and those steampunks uh, fish and uh, dolls I actually bought uh, on Etsy. So that is also if you prefer to spend some money, why not? And also there are, uh, you know, like eye stock, I think, uh, which you have to pay to get some photos. Uh, so we will probably have more choice. You can do that if you want. Otherwise, you can just use, uh, you know, uh, the uh, pages or the sites I gave you. And uh, as I mentioned, use the matte photo paper, print it in color or in black and white, fuzzy cut everything, uh, keep it nicely stored so you can actually see what you have so they don't get broken and just simply enjoy your creative process. I hope I explain everything to your liking. It's understandable and clear, but if you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing, and uh, I hope I'm gonna see you soon. Bye bye!